Hello, welcome back to Testable Faith. I'm Jeff Zwerink, and I'm excited today because we have our visiting scholar, Eric Hedin. We're going to talk about some of his testimony and just what God has shown him as he studied science and worked out in the world. Eric, great to have you here today. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good. I know you've uh, been a physics professor at a number of places. Uh, I guess a question I would have for you is, how has your Christian faith played out in your work? What's some of the things that have happened there? Well, it's it's kind of a, a big question, actually. I've been a physics professor um, for most of my career and mm -hmm. uh, taught at a number of different universities, uh, both Christian and uh, state universities. And so my faith interacting with my discipline of teaching, it kind of depends upon whether I'm at a Christian college or, or a secular university. And uh, at, at uh, Christian universities such as Biola University where I've taught or Taylor University in uh, Indiana, um, it was easy to just talk about my faith, evidence mm -hmm. for God in scientific disciplines. Um, when I taught at Ball State, it was a, it was a different story. Um, had to be much more, I guess, uh, reserved mm -hmm. with regards to my own personal faith. Um, I felt it was all right to let students know that mm -hmm. I was a believer, you know, just as a, a personal note about who's standing in front of them. But um, uh, in terms of letting the evidence speak for itself, it had to be pretty um, uh, kind of uh, in the background, you might say. No, that's, that's uh, I'm, so you've kind of been able to teach both in a Christian environment and in a secular environment. Does that just mean you have to you know, check your faith at the door when you're in a secular environment? Or has, has, how, ha, how have you been able to integrate that into what you do when you're, when you're in a secular environment? Right. Well, I, th I think that's an important point to maybe discuss because I've found that, uh, you know, students have even asked me, you know, isn't it hard to be a physics professor and a, a Christian? And I, I actually kind of smile because it's, in, for me, not hard. In fact, I would say that my background in physics and teaching astronomy, for example, it, it gives so many more, to borrow a phrase, reasons to believe mm. um, that I have access to from my background in science that maybe the average churchgoer doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And so I find that um, uh, what God has created in the natural world, whether it's in sort of condensed matter physics or in cosmology, actually gives us many uh, objective evidences that point towards God as a creator. Well, I know a lot of people will charge, you know, you know, when you talk about Christianity and science, that it's like, no, we need to keep religion out of the classroom. And I know you've at least had an experience where you've been charged with doing that. Why don't you give us a little background on what, what happened there? Uh, what was, what was the okay. environment? So this was when I was teaching at um, Ball State University. That's just secular university you're teaching at. Yes, in, in Indiana. And um, <clears throat> so I had started off teaching a lot of astronomy courses there and uh, found out that uh, a lot of my students were interested in big questions and not mm. just, you know, what makes stars shine and, <laughs> and so on. Big questions meaning things having to do with the, the purpose of their existence or meaning of their existence. And... Um, so I designed a course there called The Boundaries of Science and I ended up teaching it for six or seven years in mm -hmm. the Honors College at Ball State, which is intended to be a little more cross-disciplinary in its approach to different topics. And um, so the Honors students were taking this as a general science class and it had an astronomy-based curriculum to it that I developed. But I also allowed a lot of uh, opportunity for students to get into small groups and to discuss questions. Mm. Like we talk about the Big Bang model for the origin of the universe, and so I would let the students talk about the question, well, why is there something rather than nothing? Okay. And, you know, the Big Bang suggests that the universe came out of essentially nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's the implication of that? Let the students discuss that. And I think that... This was a way for students to see that actually the uh, discovery of nature and what we see in nature points towards something beyond nature. Mm. And oftentimes the students would reach those conclusions on their own without me having to even say anything. 
In fact, in one of the sections I taught of this Boundaries of Science course at Ball State, one of the students who was a, a self-described um, atheist at the start of the course, um, after just a class session with other students discussing why is there something rather than nothing, told the other students that he had changed his mind, that there must be Wow. Some, something transcendent to the physical universe, some, some god or creator. You know, he wasn't quite sure what yet. But mm -hmm. uh, um, So I think that, um, again, giving students the freedom to talk about it, nature itself could provide evidence that there's something beyond nature. Well, I mean, that just sounds like a fascinating course, not just from the astronomy perspective, but it's kind of giving students an opportunity to not just learn a bunch of stuff, but actually kind of process and deal with and figure out what are the ramifications of this. So I, it sounds yes. like something the university would be pretty excited about. Yes, and in, in fact, the university was supportive of the course. Uh, it had, as I said, been going on for about six years and it was always very well um, evaluated. The students loved it. Um, it was my favorite course to teach, but um, the drama happened when uh, an outside atheist group found out about the course. It hmm. was uh, from another state. And um, I don't know how they got a copy of the course syllabus because that wasn't public material. Right. But um, basically then they threatened the university with lawsuits if they didn't shut down the course because they, based on what they presumed was going on, said that I was pushing religion on the students and teaching um, religion in a public university setting and wow. said that this is a violation of the First Amendment. And uh, it was unbelievable, but um, it ended up that the university, after uh, kind of a, a long investigation process, decided that well, we'll just cancel this course. And that uh, mm. they, they misunderstood it. They didn't really understand what I was doing. Um, and so it was a, a traumatic experience, honestly, to, to go through this and have my name and picture on the front page of various uh, newspapers and national media outlets just um, suggesting that I was really doing something wrong, uh, that right. I was pushing Jesus down the throats of these poor, uh, impressionable college students. And um, whereas in reality, it was giving them an opportunity to talk about the evidence from nature right. and what are the implications of that. So, I mean, how, how did you process all that? I mean, you know, the default response, I think, would be to be pretty angry and almost, you know, how can I fight or get them back? I mean, what, what, what came out of that for you? Well, while this was going on and, and, you know, just one reporter after another printing material that was mostly uh, misrepresenting what I was mm -hmm. actually doing in the class, I really wanted to try to set the record straight. However, even the university officials at Ball State cautioned me to not give interviews um, mm -hmm. to the press because they were aware that uh, the media would most likely twist it to... Uh, present their side of the story, oh, and um, it would end up actually kind of harming my case more than not. And gotcha. and so I didn't at the at that time give any uh, public interviews. I did mm -hmm. later on, kind of after things were over. But um, uh, what I feel like I you know you ask how did I process this um, personally, uh, based in my own. Uh, Christian belief, um, realized that really my life was in God's hands. Mm -hmm. and, and in the sense that God was in control of the situation and um, showing me even through reading in the Bible, examples of uh, other times in scripture where it seemed like things were desperate, but God says, you just, just wait, don't try to fight. Uh, the battle is the Lord's, not not yours. And um, so these kinds of verses from scripture were very encouraging and, and kind of um, helpful guidance for me during that time. And so my wife and I would pray and would seek the Lord, but just kind of leave it in his, his hands. Amazingly, he worked things for good. Part of why I'm here today has to do with that time of uh, kind of attack upon my course mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago at Ball State, um, because it led to me writing my 
book, Cancelled Science, and the subtitle, What Some Atheists Don't Want You to See. And um, the attention that got brought me connections that um, are very meaningful for me today. It is kind of remarkable how, you know, one, your, your class has this idea that there's evidence pointing towards the the existence of a creator, but also just personally hearing your encouragement in believing in God through all this is pretty remarkable. I just want to thank you for taking some time to share your story. Yes. And, um, you know, I think the most important lesson that really the Lord taught me, besides just learning to trust him in a, in a hard spot, um, you know, we see this modeled in, in the New Testament a lot, right? Jesus and, and his followers, that uh, he calls us to um, pray for those who persecute us, to um, ask God's forgiveness for those who have perhaps done us wrong. And so for me, that's where the Lord eventually led me, was mm -hmm. to that point of being able to express forgiveness uh, to you know, various people who I felt just uh, were insensitive or, or rude or, <laughs> or, or, you know, tried to do me wrong in one way or another. Um, but um, to not, not hold a grudge. And mm -hmm. in a way, you know, these people aren't our enemies. Um, we're all trying to seek out truth. And, mm -hmm. and that includes the atheists who uh, maybe launched the attack against. Mm -hmm. And so I do pray that God would lead them into all truth. Well, thanks, Eric. I really appreciate uh, your time here today. You know, if you want to know more about what Eric Hedin has written and how he has found evidence for God, I want to encourage you to check the link in the description below for the book that he's written. Also, go to reasons.org and search for Eric Hedin. That's H-E-D-I-N. You'll get lots more resources that he has produced.